In this video, I'm going to show you how to record a basic MIDI software instrument in Pro Tools. And I'm going to show you a few other little things like setting it up, viewing it, making things sound good in time by quantizing it. So let's get started. I'm going to type in the name of Pro Tools, or you can go to the Applications folder or something and open it there, or, you know, click on it in your dock or wherever you have it stored in your Start menu on uh, Windows. Loads up. Um, and can ignore this update that I don't care about at the moment. Once it loads up, there's a, th a few things you can look at right away. And in this quick start menu that it gives you, which you can bypass, gives you some options for how you start everything. I'm just going to use a blank session, but you can open something you've previously made, or you can actually open up a template that you make. Down here, there's some parameters for your session, basically for the sound quality, things like that. And the best to stick with is broadcast wave format in wave here, bit depth of 24 bits, and oftentimes you'll just want a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. We'll talk about this more in the future. Um, 48 kilohertz is used in various things for, for film and stuff. Um, but again, we're going to that later. This should be fine for most of your settings. Hit OK. Then we're going to just give it a name and save it somewhere. And I'm just going to give it the name of the same thing I had previously because, well, I've already created it. But you'll just give it a name and save it somewhere. So when that happens, it loads up Pro Tools. And there's usually a bunch of stuff um, showing there that you don't actually want. It'll usually be in this view up here called Slip View. We want to change it from Slip to Grid. And when you do so, it shows these little grid lines here. Um, yours might also have a bunch of other rulers showing. So let's see that. Me looks like something like this with 10 million different numbers everywhere showing you things that you probably don't need to know. So let's go ahead and change that to view and on your view for rulers go to minimal. Then go to main counter in view and select bars and beats if it's not already selected. You might have something like this where it shows time in minutes and seconds. Now we're going to be using musical measurements of things most of the time um, that have to do with MIDI and more often than not that means we're going to deal with musical measures and beats. I'll hit that. Now we're a long way already in, in our setup. This whole upper area of Pro Tools just shows you an overview of the types of tools and functions you have. But oftentimes those same things you can expand and see more information if you want or you can see them in separate floating windows and stuff if you go to this window menu. For instance, there's this thing over here called transport. And transport is just something, you know, that basically transports you from place to place in your session. Rewinds it to the end, fast forwards to the end, okay? Rewinds a little bit, stops it, plays it, records, shows you information about where you are. All this type of stuff is your transport. It's really important because you're going to be using it all the time to hear stuff and go back and forth to the different sections you've written. Okay. It also can be extended by having stuff about MIDI information and the rest of it. You don't have to use it up here though. You can go to Window and Transport and it'll show up here. When Pro Tools wants to show you extra stuff, you can, they have these disclosure triangles here. You just click on one and it gives you more options so you can expand what you're seeing here. I want to see MIDI controls most of the time so I hit that. Okay, If I wanted to see other things too I could hit them as well. So I'm going to zoom back out so we can see the main thing but I'll typically use this transport as a floating window. Again though you don't have to. You could show it all up here. You could add other stuff that you show up here. Never have this floating. Maybe you don't want to have this in the middle of your tracks. All right, well, we've got the basics done for making things view the way we want. Let's create a track. Now I'm gonna say track and new. And what I wanna make sure that I have done is that I've selected, um, oop, I don't want 10 tracks. I want one track. I want it to be in stereo. And I don't want an audio track. It's really important that you choose the right type of track. Audio is gonna expect microphone inputs and have specific things to deal with that. Same with these other types of tracks. We don't actually want a MIDI track even though we're using MIDI. A MIDI track isn't going to have any instruments that you can load onto it directly. MIDI track is usually used when you have like a separate 
keyboard that makes its own sounds and stuff, a synthesizer, maybe you have an old school synthesizer and you want Pro Tools to control it, that's, well, that's where you might want to use a MIDI track. There are other reasons too, again, we'll see those later. For our purposes, we want instrument track because it's going to have MIDI stuff in it and it's going to let us put a sound source or software instrument directly into it. Ticks, we want to use ticks and not samples. Ticks deals with beats and stuff like that in music and it makes it so that if we change the tempo, our MIDI track will move along with the uh, tempo and change with it. If we put it in samples, it's not going to change the length of things or the size of things if we change the speed of the song. So we want things to flow right. We're going to pick ticks here. Okay, once we're done, we hit create. So I'm going to hit create there. And now I have some track here. I'm going to call this track um, organ because I'm going to put an organ on it. I just double clicked on the track to be able to name it. I could put comments too. Um, using Pro Tools B3 style organ or whatever it is. Maybe useful for the future. Um, and I've I see a couple of things in here. I see this whole list of the main stuff: organ, clips, and stuff, instrument, inserts, I/O, which means inputs and outputs. Maybe you don't see that stuff. And if you don't, go to View, and we're in this thing called Edit Window when we're seeing tracks like this, as opposed to the mixer that shows us channel strips and stuff. So we need to go to Edit Window. And then if you don't see the things I saw, like inserts and instrument, click on inserts and click on instruments. And then that will show us those things. We could potentially do something like, you know, put, you know, show comments there too. And look, they're using my Pro Tools B3 organ. I see that. Um, I probably don't want all those things there just because it takes up a lot of room. So I'm going to go to view, edit window, and I'm going to just remove that, that comments section there. I can change it. I can enable it later if I really want to. Okay, now let's add an instrument. So I go there, go to multi-channel plugin, and I can put a bunch of stuff on here, effects and stuff, but that's not really gonna do me any good. I need something that's a sound source, which is an instrument. So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna pick some type of sound source, and in this case, I'll pick, oh yes, it's not the B3, but rather DB33 stereo, okay? And that's gonna load up this software instrument um, that Pro Tools has that emulates an organ. So you have our keys and we have our organ stops and stuff here and various other parameters that we can click on. Um, so zoom out of there. And I'm not going to hear anything right now. I need to actually hit this button record to be able to hear something. Great, got a sound source. Um, finally, I need to be able to hear um, a click track as I play so that I can try to play in time. It's really important to have a click track because if you don't, when you're trying to do something, it's going to be really hard to edit your stuff in the future. Okay, so how do we do that? There's many ways to do a lot of things when you're working in sequencers like Pro Tools. Um, Pro Tools is no exception. If I want, uh, I can go to track and they already have a default button in later versions of Pro Tools for create a click track. But I can actually do it in several different ways. So that's you don't have to necessarily do that. Um, if I push play now, you're gonna hear the sound of this annoying sound of a metronome. It's really bright and high pitch and stuff and it cuts through other sounds so it makes it easy to hear. Okay, but you heard that speed. If that speed is too fast, you might want to slow it down so you can have a more chill tempo. Maybe you try to do that and it seems like the obvious thing to do for that would be go up into one of the places that shows the transport, either up here or in this area here and you just go into where it says um, tempo or speed and try to drag this thing up and down. But look, nothing's happening. I'm trying to drag it up and down, nothing works. That's because I have this thing on right now, conductor track. I need to click that. Now it shows this arrow, lets me change things. I'm gonna bring, just drag down with the arrow to a slower tempo. If I don't like it there, I can either drag it further down or I can just double click in there and type a tempo. I'm going to type just 80 beats per minute. So it'll have 80 clicks per minute, a little bit faster than one a second. Okay, I'm going to zoom out of there. That sounds okay. 
Now I'm going to make sure I'm not at the beginning of my place. Click that. And I already have the track record enabled. So now all I need to do is click record on here on my transport. You see it shows another transport over there too. And then once I hit play, it's going to start recording. One more note though. This is going to start recording immediately. But I may want it to give me a sense of how fast it's playing before I start playing or give me some time to hit click and then jump onto my keyboard before it starts recording. So if I wanted to do that, I'll click this thing where it says count off and it says how many bars here too. I could potentially change that. When I click on it, it gives me these options. Only click during play and recording or some separate version of these. I can actually change the type of sounds I'm hearing for the metronome. How many bars of music do I want it to count before it starts recording? Here it's going to do two. It's going to go beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, boop, boop. And after that second group of four clicks there, it'll start recording. I only need one, so I'm going to hit one bar and hit OK. Um, so now that I have that, again, you just click on this and it gives you those options.